What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of E-Electric Productions. My name is Jay and today we're going to be taking a look at Rogue Trooper Redux. Rogue Trooper Redux is a celebration of PS2 era gameplay married to more modern graphical stylings. The game is based off a comic strip found in the 2000 AD British comic magazine which is best known for its Judge Dredd characters and universe. The game stays fairly close to its source material, where you, the true blue protagonist, carry around your three companions as computer chips, which you rescued from their corpses, and plugged into your backpack, helmet, and rifle. These companions' AI offer up different assistance and options for mission completion, whether it's Gunner's ability to become a sentient turret, Bagman producing different grenades and ammunitions, or Helm offering up a hollow decoy for more stealthy tactics. Most of these companions meet their untimely demise early in the game, gifting you these special abilities, with one companion's chip being retrieved a little later on. The main enemy on display here is straight out of the comics, and that's the Norts. And it all takes place on New Earth, where war is all but never ending. The setup is fun, if not simple, and that translates to the rest of the game as well. The original game came out in 2006 on the PS2, Xbox, and PC with a few earlier games releasing only on the PC back in the late 80s and again in the very early 90s. The 2006 version of Rogue Trooper has been given a graphical update and a new ending to the title of Redux. Other than the graphical overhaul, which is extensive, and a tweak to the cover system, not much else has changed. Unfortunately, while the story mode can have its fun moments, it feels very dated. In fact, I originally recorded all my gameplay as a Let's Play, but found the game was so slow and at times boring that I decided to take some clips from my recording and add a review script over it. Now I never played the original, and as such I have no nostalgia glasses to help warm my heart to the title in any way. Instead, as I play this for the first time, the dated level design, redundant combat, and lackluster voice acting all attack my gamer's sensibilities and leave me feeling as cold towards this title as the protagonist's blue skin make him appear to be. I can see the PS2 era markings everywhere, and although the characters look wonderful in their HD remastering, even the graphically sharpened levels look bare and drab in their artistic stylings. I also found the cover mechanic to be frustrating and that you have to push up against cover to activate it, leading to times when I would push into cover on items I was just trying to get around, and other times spent precious moments imitating a bobblehead doll as I weaved back and forth rapidly trying to get my character to duck and stick to the terrain. Oddly, I also found the pistol to be menacingly OP, with almost no need for my mouthy semi-possessed rifle at all. Further, I was frustrated by my character's head regularly getting in the way as I tried to line up shots, and I never did find a key or button that would allow me to switch shoulders to alleviate this issue. There is no proper jump button in the game, but instead one button provides a dodge roll, climb, and vault command. This leads to all kinds of unintended hijinks, with my character at one point dodge rolling from one platform four stories down into a group of enemies, when all I was trying to do was climb on a crate to snipe them. Other than the wonky jump button, the sometimes problematic cover system, and my character's fat helmeted head getting in the way, the rest of the controls felt really good, and I would say that 80 plus percent of the time were just fine. Combat is really dull when using the combat rifle as stated previously, but I found it to be much more fun when going for headshots with that beastly pistol, as this would dispatch enemies much faster than just pouring lead into them with the assault rifle. There isn't a whole lot of enemy variety on display, and the set pieces rarely inspire. The game always just feels held back by the generation it was created in, and scenes that should have felt epic were in reality quite the opposite with so few AI and set pieces present on the screen. A large scale battle would usually have 4-5 to five enemies present at any given time, and that just always left me feeling like I was going to round the bend to see the full scale attack. It just never happened. The game is also very short, with a completion time of 5-6 to six hours being the norm. I would love to say that the story wins the day here, but it's really just serviceable at best, with the story usually being undersold by voice actors who were using poor fake accents or trying to channel their inner Keanu Reeves and just sounded bored and uninterested. It's hard to get excited about a game when the battles feel weak, the story feels weak, and the levels feel, well, weak. So is this a bad game? No, I think that when it came out in 2006, it was ahead of its time in most areas. I think that the variety of options and how you want to face challenges in the game was a big step in the direction we've landed today. The fact that you could use stealth or combat, hacking or force, diversion or deception, was something that felt new and exciting in 2006. The set pieces probably felt pretty grand a decade ago. The storyline was probably much more winsome in a time where action games had usually been mindless shooters. Does this equal a purchase at $25 today, though? For me, sadly, no. Without any kind of rose-tinted nostalgia glasses, I'm left with a graphically updated nod to times gone by, and sadly, it has not aged well enough to compete with a litany of games that vie for my attention, time, and money today. If this game holds fond memories for you, then it may be worth the price of admission to take a trip down memory lane. 
The game does have two multiplayer modes, but both are so woefully boring that I don't think anybody's going to be playing them a month from now. I would hazard a guess that if you've never played this before and spend the $25 on it today, that even if you enjoy certain parts of it, you'll still be left with some buyer's remorse. And that's coming from someone who still claims the PS2 as his favorite console and still plays PS2 remakes to this day. In my opinion, the RPGs have fared better than some of the action titles. So that's going to do it for this review. I hope I was able to help or inform in some way and look forward to seeing all of you on the next episode of Electric Productions. Game on, everyone.